So while the official name of this episode is Advanced Windows Command Line or something like that, the reality is, is this episode is the last few commands on the A plus objectives that I didn't know where else to put. So they're command line, so let's go ahead and put them here. The first two I'd like to start with are GP update and GP result. Let me show you those guys right now. GP update and GP result are designed to help you with group policies. Now we've got other episodes that cover group policies pretty well in this series, but what I want to talk about right now is the issue that a lot of times you'll set a group policy, like uh, you'll force everybody who logs into your computer to use complex passwords, or you'll set up a particular user where they can run backup. So, all these interesting types of policies that you can set up. The problem with these, sometimes it can take Windows hours, like 16 hours, before it will actually kick in. Now, on an individual local machine, it's not too bad, but when you're setting up with a big bunch of domains and you've got a domain controller and it's got policies and your individual policies, it can get messy. So, GP Update only has one job. It says, just pretend like you're booting up again, computer, and check all of your group policies and get yourself updated to reflect all the changes that have taken up to this point. So what I'm going to do here is I've got group policy editor up and running, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the maximum password age, which is by default 42 days. I'm going to change it to 10 days. Now, that's a pretty common thing to do if you want to make people change passwords a lot, but even though we've made that change, it's not going to instantly show up here. Uh, it really depends on your systems. If you want to know for sure everything gets updated, you run GP update. So I've got my command line here, and GP update's pretty easy. You type GP update and you hit enter. There you go. You now know how to run GP update. Again, you're going to run GP update because you've made a group policy update and you want it to run right now. That's what you're going to do with that. Now, similar to GP update is GP result. Sometimes going through your group policies and trying to figure out exactly what things a certain person or user can do can be a little bit complicated. So, a nice thing we can do uh, with GP result is kind of like, look, I don't want to go through millions of graphical screens. Just give me a quick rundown on a particular user, for example. So, so we're going to run GP result. Now, if you take a look at your options here, you've got all kinds of amazing options you can do here. I can do a policy on, I can just do a quick overview if I want to. I can zero in on a particular computer. I can do it on a particular user, which is what I want to do in this particular case. So, I'm just going to type in GP result slash user, and then the user I'm interested in, which is the one I'm logged in now currently is studio, and then I'm going to put in slash V, that's verbose, it gives me some extra information. And it's going to take a minute for this to run, because he's literally got to go not only look at his own policies, but this guy's on a domain, so he has to look at his as well. And you get this big, messy interface. Now, I'm, let me scroll up to the top, just to give you an idea of how much is actually here. So it starts right up about here, and there's some overview information. What I like about this, and again, I'm working with a particular user, so what's usually most interesting to me is I will scroll down, here it says user settings, and it gives me an idea of exactly what groups this user is a member of, not only local groups, but also in my domain and any specific security privileges that have been assigned to this particular user. So it's a great one-stop shop to say, I want to know everything that this user can do. I want to see one little snapshot so there's no question marks. And that's the beauty of dealing some of these group policy stuff from a command line. Okay, now that you've got that, we're going to switch gears completely and talk about two more commands. These two commands, task list and task kill are designed to allow you to shut down, well, view and shut down processes from a command line. So let's take a look at both of those. Task list and task kill are your two buddies who work together to do one really, really important job. Shut down a rant 
processes that are keeping you from doing whatever you need to do. So if I can't allow task manager to kill something for me, or if I want to kill something within a script, for example, I can use task kill. Now, the problem is task kill by himself is a little bit useless because task kill needs a number, your process ID or your PID to be able to kill something. And that's what task list is all about. It lists all the running processes and it gives it a number. So let's go through both of these. Now, if you take a look up on the screen, I've got this local group policy editor running and we're going to pretend he's frozen up and I can't kill it. So what I've got to do is figure out how to shut him down from a command line. So let me move him off to the side for a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first run task list and it's going to give me a list of all the tasks that are currently running on this machine. And there it is. Do you see MMC right there? So that is the uh, MMC console which is actually running the group policy. So I need to shut that fella down right there. So this column right here is the process IDs. See PID right there? So we'll scroll down. Let's get that number again. It's a really bad idea to uh, kill the wrong program. And we'll see it's 5808. Okay, so now that I've got the process ID, now I'm going to use task kill and actually make it go away. Ta-da! And it's gone. So, if you need to kill a process at the command line, your best buddy is task kill. However, you're not going to know the process ID unless you run task list. All right, so make sure you know these four programs. Even though I wasn't exactly sure what to put it in this episode, I assure you, you're going to see them on the A+. Plus. <laughs>